let's illuminate the defense. Richard Sherman once said, when it comes to playing cornerback, you're on an island out there. It doesn't matter if you're hurt or you're tired, if there's a negative 25 degree wind chill, or if the NFC Championship is on the line. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is, can you make a play? And in 2013, for Richard Sherman, the answer was yes. Sherman lines up across from Michael Crabtree in press coverage. From the snap, Sherman utilizes his leverage to force Crabtree between himself and the sideline. Even when Crabtree pulls up for the double move, Sherman sticks tight in coverage. There is no breathing room on this road, nor has there been all day, as Sherman has deterred San Francisco from targeting him entirely. Sherman high points the ball, contesting the pass and tipping it into the waiting arms of Malcolm Smith. The Seahawks are headed to the Super Bowl. Regardless of what our eyes see, the data of this play tells a much milder story. Without knowing this was the tip, it would range from difficult to impossible to classify the many things Sherman did to eventually force this interception. And this was the state of defensive analytics in 2013. No much could be done beyond what we observe once the ball was released. And even then, it wasn't perfect. For all of the rest, we stay mostly in the dark, never being able to fully grasp what may a corner a shadow or a safety a blanket. Next gen stats tracking data flips again on its head. We can finally turn the lights on and illuminate the defense. No longer in the dark are the things that happen off the ball or even before the pass is released. Not only can we learn about all the players in a play, but also about previously unexplored aspects like jamming, pre-release coverage, and deterrence. We can even take our existing models and push them beyond our previous limit. Driving all of this war are two fundamental components, which are outcome probabilities and value allocation. With these two components, we can break the dynamic game of football down into bite-sized pieces and more easily calculate the value of all players involved at the frame-by-frame -frame level. We do some really fancy stuff to make these models wonderful, like dynamic time warping for defender assignment and the use of field ownership. We don't just stop there either. We also validate our models out of sample to guarantee that they perform as we intend. A lot of decisions were made throughout our work, and we want to highlight three tenets that guided our decision-making throughout this project. The first is to not peek at the answers. Like Brian Burke and others, we exclude QB orientation from our target probability model at the time of throw. Including QB orientation would abstract how we measure the defender's skill in deterring targets. Additionally, we build different models for different skills. A player deterring targets in excess of what we'd expect given their matchup separation is one skill. Limiting yards of separation is another. Simple models cannot account for both simultaneously. We credit players for their performance in both of these skills. And of course, not all matchups are created equal. Therefore, we make sure to account for quarterback and receiving skill in order to credit defenders playing against great offensive players. With these tenets in mind, we see who leads the pack in each of our four metrics. Five years after the tip, and Sherman is still a nuisance to throw at, albeit on the other side of the division, his appearance is no surprise. Similarly, the majority of names on these lists is very reassuring. It's important to note that while all of these phases add value, certain phases carry more value than others, though especially those events at the time of pass arrival. Although 2018 saw a lot of incredible defense, our models saw three standouts, Kyle Fuller, James Bradbury, and Stefan Gilman. Their accolades and reputation speak for themselves. These are three exceptional players who add top percentile value to the defenses they play on, albeit in slightly different ways. Before we go, let's check back in on Richard Sherman with the lights turned on. When it comes to playing cornerback, you're on an island out there. It doesn't matter if you're hurt or tired, if you're playing against the league MVP or the fastest receiver. All that matters is, can you make a play? And for Richard Sherman, our models say yes.